Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Had a really good fishing week. Uh, special shout out to Jason and Gary. They're, they listen to the podcast on a regular basis and they booked chartered with, charters with me last week and we did the bottom fishing thing and I got to see firsthand about how I fish and the type of fishing that I do. So we caught some beautiful mutton snappers uh, and then we did some chum balling for some some really big giant flag yellowtails and the giant flag yellowtails can be hard to come by in the summertime but I seemed to you know worked on worked on it it took me many years to figure out the patterns about catching those fish and how to do it so we did the chum balls again my chum ball mix that I have for sale on my course on my wet on my tackle shop site and that mix really tends to get them fired up and going. I'm not a fan of sand. Again, fish can't eat sand. And a lot of fish are seeing this stuff over and over and over again. And if you don't believe that fish become conditioned to certain things, then it's... <laughs> but I just want you guys to... If there's, it's, it kind of creates one of those things where some guys are like not willing to change, I guess you can say, and they're just kind of stuck in their ways. And that's great. I think that... I mean, however you want to fish, it's, it's fine. And that's just like that in the world. People just don't want to adapt or change. But all I can say is that I adapt and change every day because that's the only way that personally that I can develop. And I'm always, always working, always, always, always working. I love to work. So it's just in my in my brain. And then I take a break. And it's a very short break. <laughs> so now as far as the fishing spots go out there, and how I'm finding fish, guys, I just want to make sure you guys realize is that I didn't have a mentor, okay? I didn't have a, a I didn't have a, any generational families that I fished under down here, and I didn't have anything handed to me, okay? I just want you guys to know that. Very important. I don't have any, like, friends that are fishing with me consistently that live down here either. So everything that I've done, I've learned on my own. Now, I had a a good week last week, okay? And I was on the fish pretty good. Now, it took some time, and I had to do a lot of moving around, but eventually I did find them, and that's and finding spots costs money. I have very good sonar equipment that I saved up for on my own that I – Took my own money and invested, and bought the bought the bought the equipment. Okay, and it took years to save up for because it's super expensive. I don't come from a trust fund family. Okay, I don't have an inheritance, so I am doing this on my own with my wife. So everything that I do, I save up for. So yeah. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing because it's just going to be so much more rewarding when you accomplish little goals. And yeah, you know, what I do with the podcast is a little different. I'm not your average like, yeah, you know, I'm just not. I'm just going to be whoever the hell I want. And if you don't like to want to listen, then just don't. <laughs> so sorry, it's just me. I, it's like I'm putting I'm, I, that's just who I am. And that's kind of it. So every week I'm working at getting better. Nothing's changed. And I've got a lot of stuff that I'm working on. Some stuff I'm working on for you guys that are listening. And it's it's top secret right now. So <laughs> it's going to be really good. But I kept you guys in mind for this because uh, I've kept the new fishermen in mind, the guys with their own boats in mind that listen to the podcast. And I'm putting together something really cool. But you're just going to have to wait because it's, it's getting close. It's not ready, but it's going to be cool. Trust me. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the fishing and what happened last week and some changes that I made out there. So, But first, I want to do a little reverse. Two years ago, the bottom fishing was pretty easy. Okay, It was actually very easy. After Irma, it was extremely easy for about two years. Okay, tons of big red groupers, lots of mutton snappers. Everybody looked like a hero out there. And then this past April, 
it's like pretty easy. You've seen dudes catching stuff on YouTube. They anchor up on spawning spots and they drop down with chicken rigs and catch big muttons. Guys, it's just pretty easy in the month of April. Okay? So it was easy. It was easy for a few weeks. So that's just how it goes. You have the right spot. You can you can do some severe damage. And a lot of guys got the right spots right now. So, but now we're into the dog days of summer and the fishing's a little harder. Because the fish have moved around. A lot of these spots that these guys were anchoring on and destroying fish on, those fish are not going to come back. Trust me, they're going to move on. Next year will not be the same on a lot of those areas. Those fish are going to move because they were hammered. It's just... It's like in their genetic brains that they're to move around based on that kind of stuff. Okay? And if they're going to be there, they're going to be tight windows of how long they're going to stay. I, I'm just telling you. I'm going to give you a fair warning. But that's how it goes. So now I've had to take a different approach this season and with how many fish I take from a spot. So it lasts. And it worked out very good. Okay? So I think in – it's just I had, I had to I had to change my mindset of how I was going to approach fishing when I knew that there was fish there, and that's what I did this week. So uh, I found major large congregates of mutton snappers, and what I did was I, I took a, a I'm, I took I kind of I changed things around, and to make things last and not to put a lot of pressure on the fish. So. It goes back to when I fished. It's it's kind of a weird thing the way my brain works. So I'll tell you the story. I years ago I fished with Kyle Chandler. He's a movie star. He was in The Wolf of Wall Street, and he's played the FBI agent. He was on Friday Night Lights. He played the coach on NBC for many years, and he also was on the how when he was down here he was filming Bloodline. So he was Sheriff Rayburn on the Netflix Bloodline. A uh, super nice guy, and he booked me to go fishing. So we went fishing, and he wanted to catch a dolphin. We caught a dolphin, and then we went and caught – basically had an awesome day catching really large tunas on the hump. And I said, Kyle, let's go catch a snowy grouper. And he stopped me dead in my tracks. He goes, Ryan, I want to end this story on a high note. And in Hollywood, the way that we, the, a good writer is always going to leave things on a high note. And – that's what's going to keep you – that's what you're going to remember is that last credit, that last scene. So now he said if we go to this next spot and we don't catch any fish and you get frustrated, that's what I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember that the most. So I kind of stopped and I was like, you know, it kind of makes it makes sense. So I kind of always kept that in the back of my brain and it seemed like – and every time I try to like do something and it doesn't end well, it goes back to Kyle Chandler and that and what he was trying to teach me that day. Now the guy, it was so funny. At the end of the trip, the guy like pulled out a big brown paper bag, and it was loaded with money. And that's how he paid me was out of his brown paper bag. You know, talk about a. <laughs> it was just it was a really bizarre bizarre day, and <laughs> it's like some of the things that he said. So or just it still surprises me. It was, but he was a cool dude and it's funny, but you pick up things from people over the years and I picked that up and this past week I, I was like, I found nice, nice congregates of mutton snappers and I, I could have stayed on them and really did some damage to them. But what I did was I left things on a high note and when we had enough fish and the time was like guys were ready to come home, I just, you know, we... We left things on a high note. So if the conditions are right, the fish are still going to be there because I didn't pummel them for an Instagram picture or a picture of a table. I, I spread them out over three to four different spots. I catch two and then I go catch two here, even though that was tempting me to go back on that spot. Okay. It was like the, you have, you so got to refrain yourself. It really like, it really pains me. But in the summer, I have to fish like that because if I don't, I know that if I put pressure on those fish, that they're either not going to bite the next day or they're going to move. So I want them to stay there so I can harvest a couple and stay there as long as they can and not pummel them. So if you pummel a school, they're gone. And if you don't believe me, 
you haven't you're you haven't been doing this you're you're not, you haven't been fishing long enough. So you have to really spread out your spots in the summertime, and you have to have a lot of them. If you see my screen on my GPS, you would see the amount of fishing spots that I have. Some of them are as tiny as a garbage can. They're extremely hard to fish. But when I need to fish them to pick off a couple fish on a tough day, there I know that there's going to be fish there because they're almost impossible for people to find. And it's taken years to gather a lot of these little tiny spots. I know it's impossible for guys to anchor on them because of where they're at and how big they are. And they, you, know, you can only fish them on certain currents and certain directions because you can't get your boat position to hit them. So I have to keep that in mind too because there's certain spots some days I know that there's fish there, but I know how much of a struggle it's going to be to get them. So it's just not worth the time because you got to maximize your time when you're on the water. I always tell people that you got to maximize your time on the water and you don't want to put your angler through hell getting to them. So sometimes it's like in your brain, you're like, oh, I got to get them. I got to get them. And then before you know it, you look at your watch and you might have one fish, but you're six hours into it. So it's just, I just can't do that anymore. So, and I don't. So I maximize my time on the water. I know Sometimes that I have to set the hook versus drift, and I talked about that in my last podcast, is that this, you know, there was a couple days where the current was ripping like three miles an hour. There was no way in hell I was going to go drift fishing. No way in hell. Because you're just flying past the fish and you're wasting your time. So on days when you go out there and you want to go drift fishing or deep dropping, that's totally on you. You, I, for me, I come out there prepared to set the anchor now. Or drift fish. That's something I had to learn. And sometimes I don't want to load up the boat with chum because it sucks some days to have to carry, you know, load the boat with chum. And I may use it, I may not. Then all that chum's got to come off. It's got to come off the boat and then go back into the house. I just have to suck it up. I just have to suck it up. So, and uh, and then I got to get all the bottom rods redone. Even though I might not use them, even though I might not drift, they're there because... The other day, I go to the reef, and I wasn't planning on going out to the deep water to go do any sort of drift fishing, but I get to the reef, and we had a wind against tide, and there was no current, and the chum was falling to the bottom of the bottom, and we could we were getting them on the chum balls, but it was it was painful fishing. It was ugly, and I was not going to put myself through that. So, I like we sucked it up, and we went out to the deep spots, and we got them. So, I was ready to go. I mean, that's what I did. So I was, I had the right bait and and all that good stuff, which I'll talk about here in the future about what bait's working and what's not. And I'm not using speedos right now, guys. Oh my God. The people, I'm I'm not using speedos. I haven't seen many speedos. So I just have other baits that's working and I'm not using Ballyhoo. So, because I haven't been getting Ballyhoo right now could be a bitch. I know they're getting a lot up by the Spiegel Grove now, which is great. I'm hoping that they show up. And good numbers, but yeah, you know, as well as I do, you know, it's fishing. Bait has been tough, and the fish are now starting to. Um, we need a new crop of ballyhoo because the local ballyhoo, they're pretty much immune to the ballyhoo since everybody on the reef has a ballyhoo now. So <laughs> it just is what it is, man. They're staying right out of reach, and you know, you need a new crop of bait. You know, you need to get them stupid, and and once that new crop of bait moves in, the fishing's going to get good. We're going to get a good cycle of of fish. So, anyways, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now for me, and that's how I'm approaching the techniques that I'm doing. Like, that's how what that's what I'm doing, I guess you can say. I'm, I'm catching a few at anchor, and if I feel I need to go drift fishing, I do. Uh, I, you know, it seems like there's some dudes on, on here bashing yellowtail snapper. I'm like, well, yellowtail, so easy, bullshit. So, I mean... I don't know what the hell is this all about. Uh, I've seen some dudes on Instagram. <laughs> Yellowtail fishing is not easy. Catching small fish is easy. Catching small fish is easy. I mean, if you want to go out there and load up on 12 to 16 inch mutton, uh, 12 to 16, 12 to 14 inch yellowtail, that's really easy. You can do that every day. But if you're going out to catch 18 to 20 inch fish, and I don't see a lot of those guys, those guys that are bitching about it, catching that, that size fish. So anybody that's out there ripping on that type of fishing, you guys, it's just pathetic. 
So I yellowtail fish upon request now because what I mean by request is that I get a lot of guys now, they don't want to catch yellowtail. So I kind of, I've had to learn how to adapt. Now, if I have really big yellowtails, they want to catch really big yellowtails. So we do. If I tell them they're not available today, we don't go after them. We go for something else. So it's just how I run my program. So a lot of charters, they are like, oh, we're going to go yellowtail fishing today on our four-hour trip. That's what we're going to do. But that's not how I run mine. I, I'm looking for good bottom fish. And if the, if the large flags show up, then we're going to catch a few of those as well. And most of the time, the flags that we're catching, they're bigger than the mountain snappers right now. So we're catching some big, yeah, mon we're catching some monster muttons. So I had a, somebody, I had somebody asked me about how big that mutton like we caught last week was. And I go, I have no clue. I don't carry a scale. And um, my client, Gary, has been fishing with me for years. He asked me if that was a good fish. And I was like, yeah, that was a good fish. That was a big fish. So I have a, that was a nice fish, Gary. But, um... So as far as um, what I'm trying to get at is, as far as my tip this week is that, you know, you need to be smart during the dog days of summer about how many fish you're taking and off of one area. If you find a congregation, don't overfish them. And if you have some good spots, quit overfishing them. Quit. My God, the ocean, the fish are going to change their migration patterns. Just look at the dolphin fishing. Okay, you don't think the dolphin have changed their migration patterns? Oh hell yes, they have. So you can you can find that on the uh, dolphinresearchproject.com. You can see how they're migrating and when they're migrating. There's no secret. You can see how the tagging studies are going. If you really want to learn about it, then that's where you should be p pulling up and studying that stuff instead of bitching about there's tiny dolphin. So there's there's tools out there for you guys to pick up and learn. If you really want to learn. I mean, some of you don't, so, I mean, and some of you do. It's really interesting how this, how it works down here as far as the fishing goes, or anywhere for that matter. So, so just be wise. If you're finding, like, if you're fishing the same wreck every weekend, try to find some other wrecks to fish and spread your fishing out and just learn to adapt a little bit more. And yeah, you guys want to like really rack up big, big numbers. Yeah, but you know, I'm just word of warning for you guys that are doing that. It's great. But sometimes like Kyle said, it's best just to leave on a high note because on the next outing that you're going to have, it could be really shitty for you. Karma's a bitch. Trust me. I've learned that. I've racked up big racks of yellow to big racks of yellowtail and, and big racks of mutton snappers. And it's kicked my ass. So it's like paid, it paid me back in full turn. I mean, you don't want to think like that, but oh man, it's so true. So just be mindful out there because things are different. There's a lot more guys fishing and more guys are fishing on top of you. So you don't think they're getting your spots when you guys are anchor fishing right now? Bullshit. So those guys that are buzzing you, man, they're tapping their, 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 um, they're tapping their man overboard button. They're coming back and they're fishing that when you're not there because they know when you're fishing. They know when you're fishing because a lot of people are out of work right now and that's what they're doing. So they know when they know your patterns. They're watching you on Instagram. Don't believe me? They are. So because that's what I'm hearing. So all you high hookers out there, so that are putting up the big numbers, just know that you're going to have to adjust too because there's guys out there that want to be you. And they're gonna fish on you, and they're gonna they're gonna destroy your spots, so that you've been fishing for years. So just be aware. You gotta fish some with some strategy out there, guys. Use some strategy. Be very mindful out there, and about how you're fishing, when you're fishing those spots. Um, just know that if you're gonna fish on a Saturday, a good spot at a prime time, just beware that they're gonna get you. They're gonna find you, and they're gonna set on you. And then they're going to be on vacation, and they're going to come back to the next day and say he was here, and then boom, there goes your spot. There's not going to be any fish there because those guys are going to harvest as many as they can because they're on vacation. That's how it works. So so I just kind of went off on a tangent, but that's just me. <laughs> so I'm going to bring myself back down here, and I'm going to sign off for the day. So I'm going to put out another podcast midweek. I'm going to talk a little bit about some, some new dolphin rigs. And 
show you and then talk about a dolphin rig with the bait strips that I that I use. And that's all I got. My next course, is, I'm working on that too. It's going to involve downrigger fishing. So stay tuned. And if you want to check out my courses, the you know this week is a good week to do it because it's going to be windy, and then you can apply those courses to the next time you go out. If you want to get better, I have I'm putting out the tools for you guys to to purchase the courses and and get better. So I've got the chum ball course out there, the double rig ballyhoo, and the uh, my mutton crusher rig, and my mutton crusher rig crushes it. So it does. It's a, it's an awesome awesome rig. Don't believe me. You got to try it by the course. That's all I got for today, guys. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. You can see what I'm catching. You can see what I caught last week. It's uh, good karma sport fishing underscore FL underscore keys. And check out my website, www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. You can learn more about me there. And my next available opening charter boat fishing wise is not until like, I think like August 10th or 11th or something like that. So you can check in with me weekly and see if I have any cancellations because I am getting some people that are calling because of COVID and the COVID thing down here. Eh, I don't know. I got to get into that shit. I'm going to sign out and go. I'm going to go eat. So Melinda's making grouper tonight. Super excited. Guys, hope you everybody had a good weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. And most importantly, leave the small fish for the boat behind you. Thanks for tuning in.